I'm going to start this off by telling you three true facts about babies. Now, these facts are about the infant mortality rates of smokers versus non-smokers babies. So it's a little bit morbid, but stay with me. Fact number one is that underweight smokers babies have a significantly lower mortality rate than the underweight babies of non-smokers. This is surprising, but it's a fact. Fact number two is that non-underweight smokers babies, so all the rest of them, have about the same mortality rate as non-underweight non-smokers babies. So in either case, you're the same or better off, it would seem, than a non-smokers baby. But if you take all of these numbers together and you add up both underweight and not underweight categories, you'll see that smokers babies have a much higher mortality rate than non-smokers babies. This situation is called Simpson's Paradox. Now the first natural question that arises when you hear this should be, how can this happen? How can we have relationships such that A is less than B and C is less than D, but A and C together are greater than the combination of B and D? So I've come up with a little story that I hope will help you intuitively understand how this sort of thing could come about. And the story has to do with two fruit vendors, Alice and Bob. Now Alice believes that she's the better fruit vendor, and she points to Bob's 50 bad apples, whereas she only has two. Bob acknowledges that he has 50 bad apples, and it's not great, but these 50 bad apples are out of 100 apples total, so really he has a 50% bad apple rate. Whereas Alice only has three apples for sale, and of those, two of them are bad. So she's got a 66% bad apple rate, which makes her actually proportionally a worse source of apples. Now Alice says, fine, I don't have the greatest apples, but I'm not really a bad apples anyways. I've got here a hundred bananas, and of my hundred bananas, only three of them are bad. I only have a 3% bad banana rate. How can Bob possibly beat that? Now Bob turns to his bananas and points out that he has a 0% bad banana rate, because in fact he only has three, and all three of these are good bananas. Now Alice feels like this is ridiculous, because if you combine the fruits that both vendors have to offer, they've both got a total of 103 fruits, and of those 103, 50 of them are bad at Bob's card, and only 5 are bad at her card. How can his possibly be better? Now, the thing is that these statistics aren't wrong, if you want a banana, you should go to Bob, because you have 0% chance of getting a bad banana. And if you want an apple, you should also go to Bob, because 50% of the time you'll get a good apple, whereas at Alice's cart, you only have a 1 in 3 chance of getting a good apple. Paradoxically, if you don't know which fruit you want, and you're happy with whatever they can offer you, and you would like a random fruit from either cart's complete collection of fruits, then suddenly you have a nearly 50% chance of bad fruits from Bob, and a nearly 100% chance of good fruits from Alice. So what exactly is going on here? How should we read these statistics? What's going on here is that we're making an unfair comparison between Alice and Bob's fruits. The reason it's unfair is because there's a lurking variable, and the lurking variable is the type of fruit that they're selling. If apples and bananas that they're getting actually came from the same provider, and the base rate of bad apples was actually 50, and the base rate of bad bananas was something like 5, they would still have different performances based on the amount of each type of fruit that they stock. The simple fact that Bob is mostly selling apples means that he'll have a higher overall bad fruit rate. Now there's even room in there for him to have better sources of each fruit. Like in our example, maybe his true rate of bad bananas is zero, and maybe Alice's true rate of bad apples is 66. And in that case, he can have better sources of both fruits, but still have a worse overall performance because he is mostly selling the less reliable fruit. So the idea is that when you look at Alice and Bob's overall bad fruit percentages, the differences you see are mostly driven by the differences between apples and bananas, rather than the actual vendors themselves. So let's go back to the example with the babies. It turns out that what's happening here is that smokers very commonly have underweight babies, whereas non-smokers don't. The story we can tell is something like, smoking causes your baby to be generally weaker and more likely to be underweight at birth. But non-smokers, when they do have underweight babies, maybe it's due to some specific and damaging health problem, which is more likely to result in the mortality of the baby. So overall, non-smokers underweight babies are at higher risk. Now conversely, smokers babies who are not underweight might have something extra going for them. Maybe they're extra healthy, and so despite being smokers babies, their mortality rate will be about the same as non-underweight non-smokers babies. Statistics can be very subtle and counterintuitive. So it's very important that, before making any conclusions from data you see, 
You make sure that you know about any lurking variables between the groups you're comparing, and you have a firm grasp of any possible causal relationships between the variables at play. Now you might think that things like Simpson's Paradox are kind of one in a million special engineered cases where you won't actually run across them very often in real life. But it turns out that if you generate a random data set, one in 60 of these sets will have this Simpson's Paradox relationship where A is less than B and C is less than D, but A and C together are greater than B and D. So this is something that's actually important in real life, and there are some really fascinating examples of it you can find on the Wikipedia page for Simpson's Paradox, including some medical studies about kidney stone treatments and a very famous lawsuit against Berkeley in the 70s about gender bias in graduate school admissions. So I'd recommend that you look those up if you're curious. There are some really interesting stories behind there. Anyway, that's my take on Simpson's Paradox. Uh, thanks for watching.